Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to braze in your line set into your service valve connections. So right here we have 3 8 OD and 7 8 OD copper tubing, and we already have it connected in. We have not brazed it yet, but it's already connected in at our evaporator coil. We're waiting to braze in the filter dryer until everything else is brazed in. We're going to be flowing nitrogen through at 3 cubic foot per hour right in through here, and it's going to exit over on this side. That all needs to be done while brazing to avoid oxidation inside your copper tubing. We don't want any air inside there, just nitrogen purged through. So we're just flowing this nitrogen through from one side to the other, and we're not pressurizing the inside of the tubing while we're brazing. We're going to be using an air acetylene torch, and the first thing we got to do is we got to go ahead and remove this valve core. This one's already removed, but we do have a cap on the end, this is also a new condensing unit, so there is R4 tonight trapped on this side of the service valve. So these service valves are in the front seated position, and after we get done brazing, pressure testing, vacuuming, that's when we're going to be breaking the vacuum with refrigerant. But for right now, we're just brazing our line setting. So first things first, we're going to take the valve core removal tool, and we're going to take the back out, and we're going to pull the valve core out of the port. So now we have that out, we're going to go ahead and connect our yellow service line. I'm going to go ahead and place this in an area where it's not going to get blown over. I'm going to actually take this uh, so that it doesn't get lost or sand in it or anything like that in the meanwhile. Next I'm going to start my nitrogen flow. So first thing we have to do is make sure our regulator's out. So it's not in to where when we open this, it's going to apply the pressure down into our flow meter. We want to make sure that it's backed out first. So we'll go ahead and open our tank up. You see that our tank pressure reads about 1600 PSI. And on this side, we only need to get it between 50 to 100. I usually put it around 50. If you put it too high, you're going to have the pressure relief blow. So we want to have it just, just enough. So 50 is fine. So right about there. And then we're going to rise this ball right here. I don't know if you can see that, how well you can see that at least. You see that the ball rises and falls. I'm going to have it floating right down in the lower section there. And that means it's, it's flowing at 3 cubic foot per hour roughly. So since I just am doing this now, I'm actually going to go ahead and purge the line set first. Because I'm, I'm going to immediately go ahead and start breezing. So I want to make sure that I have this valve cap off of here. And I already have removed that valve core out of that port. So I don't want to start brazing immediately because I haven't got all of the air out of the tubing quite yet. Once you purge it, uh, then you can go ahead and bring it back down to your 3 cubic foot per hour. So right there. You want to make sure that you don't try to use your refrigerant gauge set without a flow meter like this. What's going to happen is you'll be flowing nitrogen in the beginning and then all of a sudden you're not flowing nitrogen or you're flowing too much nitrogen you think you're flowing maybe three to five cfh but you're not you know you're, you're putting too much pressure in and what will happen is you'll have a pinhole leak at one of your braze joints and that's where the nitrogen is escaping at now that i have my nitrogen flowing through out this port right here i'm going to go ahead and wrap this valve with a, a wet rag so that i don't heat it too much when i'm brazing this joint right here i'm actually going to just put this cap on to make sure i don't get water down inside of the valve this is a cold, wet rag. I've already leak checked all the hoses and the connections right here for this acetylene tank. So this is a B tank, and we have our regulator backed out. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to make sure our handle is shut, and we're going to go ahead and open this up counterclockwise. So you only want to turn it maybe a quarter turn. Uh, you definitely don't need to open it up all the way. You see that we're reading right about half a tank right here. I'm going to go ahead and get my hose out. Here we have a uh, number 11 tip. Once again, this is shut. I'm going to go ahead and turn this in. And now you can hear your acetylene coming out. So we're ready to go here. Now before we start brazing, I want to go ahead and move these tanks for safety. You also want to have a cup of water and also a fire extinguisher. We have our wet rag here just in order to get ready for brazing. So we're going to be using our aerosetylene torch to melt our 
breeze rod. This is a 15% silver breeze rod and it melts at about 1350 degrees. The next thing that we want to think about is our flame placement. So our flame is going to be shooting in this direction. So towards that dirt and block wall and then we're going to have to switch it and come in this direction right here in order to get the back side. Right now we are flowing nitrogen through and this rag is not covering up the port. So it's important that this wet rag remains on the service valve to cool it as we braze. Once this changes color, then it's safe to go ahead and wipe it with a wet rag. There's no bad effects from doing that. So we're going to go ahead and cool it down as quickly as we can. We made sure that we had a little crown going from the outside of the tubing to the actual tube. So the braze is not going in and then coming back out. Like You should be able to rub your fingernail on there and it doesn't get caught, which means that you have a nice little crown on the outside of here. So I'm gonna let that cool down, finish cooling for a sec. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch this hose and put it right onto this one. That braze joint is a little odd. I would typically put my body over on that side in order to braze this, but I had to go over the unit for you to be able to see that on the camera. So you see I switched the service hose over onto the vapor port and the nitrogen's coming out right over here at the liquid port. So I'm gonna go ahead and light my torch now. Once that changes color, then you can go ahead and wipe it with your wet rag. There won't be any adverse effects by doing that and cooling it down quickly as long as you wait till it changes color. So now that we have both of these braced in, I'm going to take you in for a closer look. And then also what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to braze in the, the inner portion now. It's all connected, but it's not brazed in. The very last thing that I'm going to braze in is the filter dryer, just to make sure that no extra contaminants get trapped inside the filter dryer. Here you have a close-up look at our braze joints, and you see that my fingernails is riding right up the braze joint. It's not going in and, and getting stuck on there or anything like that. And then this is going the opposite direction. It is not getting stuck. So you want to have it thick on the outside right here. It's just an indication that you did a good braze joint. That's after you have it all melted and sucked in. You always want to have the flame back further on the joint so it gets sucked back there to the heat. And then after that's done, that's when you go ahead and put a little extra on the uh, outside right here. So same thing with this one. You, you first heat up the inner tube, then you back up to this part right here, and that's going to end up pulling the braze inward. And then after you've done that, then you can put a little extra rate on the outside here. If you're looking for the Uniweld nitrogen regulator or the flow reg, 
as well as the valve core removal tool, the braze rods, or the air acetylene torch setup. I have that all linked in the description section below. If you want to see other nitrogen and brazing videos, I have them linked in the description section as well. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.